sometimes out in the recesses of our mind. God says sometimes it's out in the recesses, the far areas, the dark shadowy areas of our mind that the devil tries to pull some of this stuff back in. <clears throat> but it's out there in the recesses and it has to be de dealt with it. What? I said yes, amen. Yes, amen. <laughs> it goes in the deep recesses. The recesses, out in that shadowy part. It's not in the forefront. That's right. And so you have to you keep it at bay, amen. You you get set free. Yeah. Allow God to take it away, amen. But it, it's there. It's a part of the gospel. He had never intended for us to walk like most churches and most Christians walk today. No. Never intended. That was not God's intention back then. It's not His intention now. He loves us. He cares about us. He cares about the whole man, amen. Body, soul, and spirit. And yeah, really, we were, we're the ones that divide it up anyway. He doesn't. <laughs> and <clears throat> Amen. But anyways, so that's the scriptures, you know, throughout. Isaiah 3.53. Um, Jesus countless told him many times. Luke 9 said to go out and preach the gospel. I was looking for one of that. Did I not write it down? But you see, it was no different for him, no different. Jesus didn't have this part of piecemeal mentality. He took care of the whole man. He was concerned about the whole man. Sons, your, son, your sins are forgiven. You rise up and walk. <laughs> it's no different. Amen. But Isaiah, uh, this is the one. Yeah. Jesus, even quoting uh, Isaiah 61 in Luke chapter 4, he says that he, Jesus, was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. What did he say? Most of you can quote it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. That sounds like healing to me. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. Again, body, soul, and spirit. Jesus was anointed. Amen. Uh, it was prophesied in back, Isaiah prophesied of him that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him to do these things. So throughout Scripture, it's it's really it's a part of the atonement. It's a part of His atonement, bringing us back in to relationship with God, body, soul, mind, and spirit. The whole being bringing us back in. And I guarantee there is no sickness and disease in the Spirit of God. There is no sickness and disease in heaven where Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. There is no sickness and disease anywhere in God's mind, amen, or His Spirit. He is set free. Not in that kingdom. What did they say? The I kingdom of earth. The kingdom has come nigh you, come near you, amen? The kingdom has come near you. Notice he didn't say the kingdom is here, it's come near you. I think that was to thwart off those kingdom guys. <laughs> Amen. But in the kingdom of God, let's say that this is the kingdom. Amen. Amen. But so it is. The kingdom of God is come near. Well, how do you know the kingdom? They said, lay hands on the sick, cast out the devils. Amen. Pray. And manifest. Reveal the kingdom. That's how he did. He revealed the kingdom to them. Because they didn't have eyes yet to see those that are, were there. But they could see that. They could experience that. Right. And know. Amen. Something's different. What do they say? One, one scripture says after that, that why wow, have we seen strange things today? <laughs> it wasn't the normal. Amen. We are called not to walk in the normal. Amen. We are called to walk in the supernatural. We are called to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. I'm not led by fear. I'm led by the Spirit. Amen. I'm not led by pain. I'm led by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm led by the Spirit of God. When He says pray, that's when I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, you want to take the battle? Take the battle to the devil. Don't let him bring it to you. What does I mean by that? He likes to poke you with pain. Well, yeah, he grabs your mind with it. Right. And what's he doing? He's getting your attention. That's right. God does not want us to give the devil attention. He wants us to go, be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Follow the Spirit. He's teaching us to follow the Spirit, not 
the pain. Follow the Spirit of God, not the situation. Amen? It's easy to get into that reaction. And believe me, I understand. Amen? I understand. But we have to keep in the forefront of our mind to be led by the Spirit. It's somewhat easier for me. She's in pain. I pray. I don't know she's in pain. <laughs> so I can understand. Amen. <clears throat> but the point is, let's follow the Spirit of God. Let's let's be champions of the, the gospel of Christ. Amen. That's one thing God wanted to say. He said, let's be champions. Who wants to be a champion of God? Who wants to stand up and fight for the weak? For the weak? Amen. Who wants to be that vessel that God can use? Amen. That's, but you have to be led by the Spirit. That's the only way that comes. You can't do it. You can't be led by circumstances. It has to be pure Spirit. It has to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? Let's not be led by our eyes. Led by that which we feel. What is the, there's a scripture that says something like that. We walk, not, we walk by faith and not by sight. Right. Amen? Right. We don't walk by what we feel. Say what I'm saying. <laughs> so let's be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. <clears throat> let's pray. Let's believe God. Let's walk by the Spirit and not by sight. Amen. The devil loves us to walk by sight. Oh, we react to him. He loves it. He, he, lo he loves the attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me poke him. Let's see if I can get their attention. No, no, no. Remember that one time? Oh, that was, yeah, Matt. Matt was, he's a little boy. That was quite a while ago. Just just by way of experience. I think I mentioned it too before, but very good good analogy. Matt, one of our kids, was young at the time and had an earache. And so we prayed and, you know, he felt better, pain left, went back to sleep. We all went back to sleep. And he would cry a little bit later on. And we got up, prayed again, pain left, and we all went back to sleep. The uh, third time we got we had pain, I said, all right, we're done. The Spirit of God said, we just got back that long ago, India. I said, start praying. I heard the Spirit of God say, pray for the pastors in India. Pray for the people in India. Yeah. And so Lisa and I, remember Lisa? Lisa and I started praying for, in, for the pastors and people over there. You see, it's, it's the principle of Matthew chapter 6. You take no thought, why? For your needs... But focus on the kingdom of God. Why? Well, I'll take care of your needs. Don't worry about it. That's that's not for the weak. <laughs> no. That's not for the weak. But you see what I'm saying? We prayed for. We never heard from Matt again that night. <laughs> Why? Because you got to take the battle to the devil. You got to take it to him. Why? Because we already have the victory. We already. We should have confidence that we're walking in it. Amen. You start infiltrating his territory. You start battling him. You start taking territory in places he wasn't even considering. <laughs> you got him on the run. Amen. It's just simple. It's it's simple. It's not even anything deep. But it works. The gentleman that was working out here, I won't name names, but I think I talked to Jerry about this. Uh, you know, he he was big on confession. <clears throat> well, you say, in you know, well, this is what I do. Well, you know, I I spoke it with my mouth, and then all of a sudden the, the Spirit of God says, it's "Speak it in your mind," and you know, he got some relief that way. I said, "Well, it's more this that the Spirit of God spoke to you. The Spirit of God told you to change it up," and. Uh, and I said, at that point, you're following the Spirit of God because He told you to change. You heard from heaven. You heard, and it changed. And so we go on, and you know, he, and we were talking about. I said, there's a, the whole armor of God. There, there's many different weapons that we have available for spiritual warfare, and so on and so forth. But they're of no no use unless we're led by the Spirit and how to use them. He said, well. Mm -hmm. I try this, and if it doesn't work, then I try that. Well, wait a minute here. You're trying things. You're working this out. You're, God wants us to be in tune on how to wield the sword of the Spirit or whether to throw up the shield of faith or, or manifest it. But it's all... It